Hi everyone, I'm Lauren and this is the second Canva tutorial to help writers to market their own books. In the first one, we created this hero image for Vat of Acid, a book by Jade Wilde. And for the second one, I'm going to be showing you how to create a nice eye-catching image with a quote from a book to be used on social media or any promotional material. I'm going to be doing it for Jade's book as well as another one to show you the stylistic differences and how to pull from the look and feel of your cover or any reference material that you might have. This is what it will look like at the end. This is Milo, the sassy black cat that Jade said plays a role in the book. This was the original canvas that I worked on to show you for the first tutorial. And I like to work on the same document for these sorts of things so you can copy and paste elements. I'm going to add a page and then search for the image of the black cat on a dark background. And it comes up with our little cat that I found. To drag the edges to resize and center it on the canvas as best as you can. To make the background match the photo, you select it and the color section. And then you use the eyedropper tool to select the background of the photo and it'll make it the same color on the canvas. So I'd like to make this pop a little by adding elements from the cover. So what I'm going to do is add a border with spooky branches and trees just to pull from the cover elements and make it a little bit more eye-catching. I'm searching for a spooky branch border. And this is what it comes up with. I like to use graphics for this sort of thing because then you can change the color on some of them. This one is one that you can change the color. You can see here it gives the option to do that. And I'm going to change the color now. One of the nice things that Canva has is that it automatically generates color options for you based on the photos on the canvas. So if you click on see all, you can play around with which colors look nice. I'm trying to have something that's quite subtle, but still visible. So that works well. To get this to fit into the top left border, I'm going to flip it. Flipping vertically turns it around from bottom to top, and then I'm going to resize it as well. Then I can copy and paste it to get it to the bottom right corner. Once again, flipping it, this time vertically and horizontally, which goes from left to right or right to left. So now that I have the graphic elements, I'm going to add the text. The quote that I've decided to use, where's a handy vat of acid when you need it? So to add our text, I'm going to write it as three separate lines. So this was the original font that I used in the first tutorial, but I'm going to use a serif font for this one. It makes it look a little bit more eye-catching. Times New Roman is an old faithful that works very well, but you can play around with fonts that work with your cover art or just what works for you and you think that'll go with the look and feel. I'm going to use Times New Roman for the top and bottom and the condensed for the middle part of the text and make the middle text quite a lot bigger and as you can see I'm positioning this around the cat's eyes as I'm moving things around you'll see these pink lines coming up on the screen and what those are it shows you the invisible grid on the canvas and you're snapping it to certain elements if it is a solid pink line like that it means that it's snapping it to the center of the canvas and if it is a dotted pink line then it's to items below or above it or anywhere else on the canvas. I'm going to also do Vat of Acid in a different font since that's the focal point of this quote. I'll be doing this in a handwriting font. Something that's quite helpful is going on Pinterest and searching font pairings. And this will show you a whole lot of fonts that work very well together visually. 
and signature is a good option and you have to make this quite a lot bigger. I'm just moving the text around so that it is nicely centered over the cat's face. And there's the little dotted pink line again. So the white text looks a little bit harsh. I'm going to pull a yellow color from the eyes so that once again we're getting an element from the photo itself. So I'm going to select all of these three pieces of text and change the color for all of them at the same time. So select shift and select again. The text color And then for the main vat of acid text, I'm going to do that a slightly darker gold color. Once again, pulling it from somewhere on the cat's eye. To make the text pop a little bit, I'm going to put a shadow onto it. You select the text and go to effects. You can play around with what works. Sometimes a lift works, but for this case, we're going to do a shadow. You can see that it's a drop shadow and the offset is quite a little bit away from it. So to get it closer, you reduce the size of the offset. And as I do that, you'll see it gets closer to the text. And I also want to make it quite a bit darker. So now we've got the main part of the image. What I'm going to do next is bring in the hero shot from the previous one we did. And this is what I meant about copying and pasting elements from previous things. So you don't have to go and recreate that. I selected both, copied and pasted, and then I can drag the whole thing to resize it together so that it stays in proportion. So the colors of this image are yellows and browns and golds, but obviously the book cover has teal and red. So I'm going to put the author name underneath it and pull red out of the book cover but in the same font. A nice rule of thumb is if you're going to do different types of text, keep them in the same color or different colors, keep it in the same font. I'm going to make this text quite a bit smaller and then I'll pull the red color from the book cover. and then center it under the book images. Now I'm just going to move things around a little bit to make sure that the spacing and composition looks correct. And then I'm going to center the text under the book. There you'll see the vertical dotted pink line means that it's now centered to the two books above it. And there you have it, the first quote image for Instagram. I'm going to do the next one, which is the book Thanatu by Natalie J. Case. And I'll show you just how different it can be when you pull from a different style of book. So thank you very much and I hope you found this helpful.